I know you all love Stockwatch Sunday, so I came up with a new segment called Follow Up Friday, where I follow up on those stocks that we're watching for the week to see how they turned out. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, guys, so welcome to Follow Up Friday. I'm really excited to get this segment started. I think people, uh, you know, kind of don't have much closure when it comes to Stock Watch Sunday. It's like, okay, great. Uh, we, these are the ones we're watching. How did they turn out? And so, uh, I think this is going to be a great way for uh, not only for you to learn, but for me to learn as well to see, you know, how we can progress from here. You know, maybe the ones that didn't end up working out, what can we learn from those? Maybe the ones that did, there's still more to learn from that as well. So let's get started. INKW, DIGAF, and QPRC were the three stocks that I was watching this week. And let's go ahead and check out how they turned out. Okay, so here is my first stock to watch in the beginning of the week. It ended up pretty strong. I got in uh, this several weeks ago at the 1.6 area, and it has now had 52-week highs of 4.39 uh, range, and it is continuing to, and this trend I think is going to continue in the next week. We'll talk about that on Stockwatch Sunday as to why, but very happy and very bullish on INKW. Since uh, Stockwatch Sunday, they have now gone current as I anticipated that happening. And we'll go into this a little bit more on Stock Watch Sunday as this will continue to be one to watch out for. Second one is QPRC. This was a little bit of a letdown uh, this week. I got in at, at the double six zero range when we first discovered that it was that they were in fact suing uh, major companies such as Amazon. Lots of people high on this, and then their 10Q came out. Uh, that was released this week and that is when the selling kind of started now I don't think a lot of people really understood why in the world people were buying in the first place There's nothing new here with QPRC. Nobody felt that QPRC was lighting the world on fire in the terms of their of how they were doing business They were simply buying because they knew That they had settled with major multi-billion dollar companies such as Texas Instruments and Amazon was next on the chopping block the financials of this company had nothing to do with uh, why people were buying this in the first place. And the reaction to the latest Q that came out, I think led a lot of people to believe that this company was not going anywhere, but I'm still very strong on it. I actually did sell this in the 186 area as representative of this line that I created here for you, just to kind of give you a visual of, you know, where I got in and out of. But QPRC is still very much on my radar and very much on my watch list. I just didn't want to ride the rest of my profits all the way down, so I took them when I had them. And then I'm going to continue to watch to, tr to see where I could potentially make a re-entry on QPRC. Last one is DIGAF was probably my worst trade of the week. I got in at 1.4 on Friday and um, had to average down. But I was actually pretty happy with where I averaged down at. If you can see here, I averaged down at double zero seven five. So now my average on DIGAF is right around a, a penny flat and it's looking like it's having a nice healthy reversal. One thing that with the DIGAF that I don't think people were very receptive of was that they came out with a 6K telling everybody that they will no longer be converting shares until late quarter one of 2019. So that would be late March of 2019. They won't be converting. But if you look at level at the level two, they are still diverting, but it's what you call overhang. Lots of people don't understand that just because they come out with a PR that it doesn't mean that conversion stops immediately. They have to get, get through the rest of their notes that they have come to an agreement with their note holders on, and then the dilution will then stop. Level two really seemed to lighten up on Friday, and I'm very happy with the fact that I got in at double zero five and was able to average down. So I'm still very strong on DIGAF. Not sure this is going to be on the Stock Watch Sunday uh, watch list, but it's still one uh, definitely to uh, consider, especially down at these levels. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up to show me some more support. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe for more content such as this. And as always, guys, I will see you all before the bell. And B. Smith is out.